Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example here, what we're trying to do is try to find the output voltage when we're given a particular input voltage. The input voltage of the source is of course time varying. It has a frequency of 4 Hertz and a phase angle of minus 15 degrees and we have a maximum voltage of 20 volts. That's the input voltage. In the circuit we have a resistor, a capacitor, an inductor and the capacitor and inductor they are in parallel to one another. And we're trying to find the output voltage here. To make it easier to figure out we're going to convert from the time domain into the frequency domain first. To do that notice that the resistor that's easy that's simply equal to 60. On the input source we have a maximum voltage and a phase angle so the input voltage will be 20 with a phase angle of minus 15 degrees. On the capacitor and the inductor, we need to make the conversion. So we already got the source voltage, that's equal to 20, with a phase angle is minus 15 degrees. But on the X sub C, that is equal to minus J over omega C, which is equal to minus J divided by omega. The frequency is 4 Hertz. And the capacitance was given to us as 10 millifarads, which is 1 100 of a farad, so 0.01 and that would be 0.04, take the inverse, that's a minus J25. So that goes in here, minus J25. So that's the, what we would call the capacitive reactance of that particular capacitor. Now we need to do the same for the inductor, that gives us J times omega L, which is J times omega, which is four, and L in this case is going to be five Henry's, which is equal to a positive J20. So now that we have that, we want to find the inductance, uh, well not the inductance, but the impedance of the two components together and they are in parallel. So to find that here, we're going to simply take the product over the sum. The product that's going to be minus J25 multiplied times J20 all divided by in the denominator we need to add the two together so it gives us a minus j25 added to a j20. All right so here j times j is a negative one times a negative one is a positive one so it gives us a positive 500 in the numerator divided by here when we add them together that gives us uh, let's see here uh, minus 5 plus 20 that means a minus j5 and now what we need to do here is we need to convert that into a magnitude and a phase angle. So this is equal to 500 with a phase angle of 0 degrees. And over here that would be a magnitude of uh, 5 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. So when we convert that we get 500 divided by 5 which is 100 and the phase angle would be 90. So that gives us 100 and a phase angle of 90 degrees. All right, now the next step, now we need to find the total impedance. So we need to combine the impedance of the resistor with the impedance that we have over here. Those are in series. So to find the total impedance, Z total, that is equal to the impedance of the resistor, which is 60 with a phase angle of zero degrees. And uh, we're going to add that to the parallel impedance that we have over there which is 100 with a phase angle of 90 degrees. Now, of course that's not easy to add like this so what we're going to do is we're going to convert so this is equal to a 60 just a real part of that and here we get plus 100 J. So you can see here that this would be the total impedance with the real part from the resistor and the imaginary part of the inductor and capacitor in parallel. So now when we convert that back into a format like this, the total is 100 squared plus 60 squared. Take the square root of that. Oop, let's do that again. 100 squared plus 60 squared equals, take the square root, 100 squared plus 60 squared equals, take the square root of that, that would be 116.6. So this is equal to 116.6 and a phase angle. So we have 100 divided by 60. Take the inverse tangent of that. That gives us a 59 degrees. 
So that gives us the total impedance of the three components in the circuit together. So now we need to find the voltage of the output. And so we're going to do a voltage divider. It's the voltage across these two components as a reflection or as a factor of the total voltage across the circuit. So in this case, the voltage of the output is equal to the voltage of the input times the ratio of the voltage of the, I should say, the impedance that's of the two components, that's the parallel impedance, divided by the total, which is Z total right here. So in this case, we have the input voltage of 20 with a phase angle of minus 15 degrees, and we're going to multiply that times the ratio of Z parallel, which we have over here, which is 100, with a phase angle of 90 degrees, and in the denominator, we're going to put Z total, which is 116.6, with a phase angle of 59 degrees. So that should give us the portion of the voltage across the two parallel paths in relation to the total voltage of the, of the circuit. So when we go ahead and do that, we get our output voltage to be 20 times 100 divided by 116.6. That gives us 17.1 volts. They're actually closer to 17.2 volts. So the output voltage is equal to 17.2. And the phase angle is going to be, uh, let's see here, minus 15, plus 90, and the minus 59, because that's in the denominator, that gives us a phase angle of 16 degrees. Now, what we can do here is convert that back into the time domain. So that means that the voltage of the output is equal to, we get the maximum voltage right here, so we put that like that, 17.2 times the cosine of the frequency times the time, the frequency is 4 hertz times the time, and the phase angle is a positive 16 degrees, so plus 16 degrees, and that would be in volts, most likely, there we go, and there is our output voltage on that side of the circuit. So, let's quickly summarize what we have to do here. We're given a circuit, where we're given a capacitor, a resistor, an inductor. We're given the capacitance, the inductance, and the resistance. We're given an equation for the input voltage as a function of time with the phase angle and the frequency. So we have to identify the frequency. Using the frequency and the values for the capacitor and the inductor, we need to find the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance. And then once we have that, we have to find the impedance of the parallel branch, which was done over here. Then we add the impedance of this plus the impedance of the resistor together to get the total impedance. And then the output voltage will simply be a ratio of the impedance here divided by the total impedance times the input voltage in this format. So we have the input voltage, the ratio of the, of the impedance across the branch. So because the voltage here will be proportional to the voltage across the branch here divided by the total impedance. And then we reconvert back to the time domain. And that's how it's done.